Hi, this is Chris Heiser from Internet2 and University of Pennsylvania. We're going to talk about um, Grouper training the developers and architects track uh, web services part 5. So in part um, 4 we talked about the first half of the operations in Grouper WS and in part 5 we're going to talk about the remaining operations. Um, just an introduction for web services for developers. Basically, the web services um, use the group, Grouper API to talk to the Grouper registry and the Grouper client or other um, custom clients can be used to talk the web service um, API to the web services. The first operation we're going to talk about is get subjects. This operation um, lets you search by ID or identifier or search string, um, just like the subject API, to look at subject information. So you can pass in subject lookups, and that those lookups have either the ID or identifier both in there, if you don't know if it's an ID or an identifier. A search string for freeform um, string query. Uh, you can put the source IDs that you want to search in, or null if you want to search all. Um, if you want to make sure that the subjects are in a certain group, you can um, send in a group lookup, and the group lookup has either the group name or the UUID. And then the field name, if the, member, if the memberships for the subjects are not in the um, members list, but a different one. And then you can specify if they have to be a direct or immediate member um, or a non-immediate member. Um, and you can also put effective or composite, uh, which are less common. You probably don't need those. The second operation is get grouper privileges. Grouper privileges are the things on groups, folders, or um, attribute definitions that control who can see them or view, who can um, assign memberships for groups, or who can create objects in a folder or who can um, assign that attribute somewhere, who can admin it, uh, opt in, opt out, etc. So basically, this operation only has a light version at the moment. Um, you pass in a subject lookup to filter the subject that has the privileges. A group lookup um, is the group if it's a group privilege, or a stem lookup if it's a folder. The privilege type, um, you could put access or naming if you know that it's a group or a stem privilege. Uh, the privilege name is uh, for groups, read, view, update, admin, opt in, opt out, and for stems, uh, stem or create. Assign group privileges will let you assign or unassign a privilege. So you can pass in the subject lookups to assign um, the group lookup or stem lookup if it's a group or a stem privilege. Uh, the privilege type, if it's a group or stem, uh, access or naming, the privilege names, read, view, update, admin, etc. And if it's allowed, uh, T is to allow the privilege or F is to remove it. Um, so if you pass multiple things in, then you'll get multiple assignments. So for instance, you could assign the same privilege to multiple subjects, or you could even assign multiple privileges to the same subjects for a certain group if you wanted to batch them up. Get attribute assignments uh, is the new attribute framework in Grouper and how you can um, see the assignments that are currently in the registry. So if you pass in more criteria, it's just to add it to the other criteria. Um, so if you pass in the um, attribute assignment type, which is if you're assigning to groups or folders or whatever, uh, the assigned lookups. Um, are the IDs of the assignment uh, itself, the UUIDs. Attribute def lookups are the attribute definition that the assignments are related to. Attribute def name lookups are the name of the attribute assigned. Uh, actions are a list of actions that you want to see risk for. Um, you can include metadata on the assignments, which are assignments on that assignment, um, which could have uh, you know name value pairs, for instance, or something like that. Um, you can pass in if the assignments uh, that are returned should be enabled or not. Um, you can you can search by um, value, so you could pass in a value type like integer or string, and uh, see those assignments. 
and then for the various um, attribute assign types you can pass in the owners that you want to look um, for assignments on so you could pass in a group lookup or a folder member membership attribute assignment etc assign attributes lets you assign or unassign attributes um, and values um, so again, you can pass in the attribute assignment type if you're going to assign to a group or a folder or whatever. The uh, assign lookups if you're um, unassigning it or assigning <coughs> unassigning that one or assigning values to that to an existing um, assignment. Attribute def name lookups are the um, attributes that you want to assign. Um, the actions are part of the um, assignment this with a certain action assigned to a certain uh, attribute name. You could have enabled or disabled dates on that assignment. Um, you could pass in the value type which is like integer or string and then the value um, that you want to assign to that assignment. You can assign a um, single assignable assignment. You could add a multiple assignable assignment. You could replace a set of um, assignments or you could remove assignments and the various um, lookups for that the owner lookups are group folder member membership uh, attribute assignment those are the things that could have um, attributes on it assign attributes batch is a new operation which should be in 2.1.2 where you can um, you could already batch certain things about attributes like you could assign the same attribute to multiple owners um, but if you just want to pass in um, a bunch of assignments that are unrelated you could do that with the assign attributes batch operation so you're going to pass in the assignments that are similar to the operation we just talked about um, assign attributes and then um, you can pass multiple of those in, in one operation and you can back reference assignments in the same batch so if you make an assignment to a group you could then assign attributes on that assignment using a attribute assign lookup with a back reference um, index to the one that you assigned to the group and then you can set the transaction type if you want all of the assignments to happen in one transaction the get permission assignments operation will let you find uh, permissions and limits on those permission assignments based on certain criteria and again the criteria that you pass in will be anded together so um, you could have the result of the permission assignments calculate limits to see if certain things should be allowed or denied so you could pass in certain environment variables for instance the IP address that the request is coming from um, or other things that the limits are based on. You can pass in attribute definition lookups or attribute definition name lookups, the actions of the assignment, whether or not you should include limits in the results, whether or not the permission assignments are enabled. Um, role lookups are the um, uh, roles that the permissions are assigned to. Subject lookups are the subjects that the permissions are assigned to. Um, you could include uh, detail or not which are some things that might you could pass in point in time from or to um, timestamps to um, see assignments that are in the past or at a certain point in time or at a time range you could retrieve immediate permission assignments only as opposed to the effective ones through some sort of inheritance and uh, the permission type if you want to see only subject uh, permissions in, a, in the context of a role or if you want to see um, assignments that are assigned to a role overall for all users in that role. The operation for assigning permissions will assign or unassign permissions. Um, you can assign to um, roles or users in the context of a role, so individuals, not to everyone in the role. Um, you need to pass in the permission name in the form of a lookup that could either have the name of the permission or the UUID. You can either assign permissions, you can replace existing permissions with a new set, or you can remove um, permissions. Permission assignments could have freeform notes assigned to them. You can give some context about um, 
why this was assigned or how it should be used or whatever. Um, you could have enabled or disabled times associated with the permissions so that they expire. Um, so permissions are assigned either to a role lookup, which would be to the role and everyone in the role, or a user role lookup, which is a user inside of a role um, where only that individual user will have the permissions. Um, actions are read, write, um, admin, whatever the actions are for that permission definition. Uh, delegatable is a flag so that um, the person who has that uh, permission could assign it to someone else and if it's allowed or not. So you could assign a permission but say you're not allowed to perform it and that will affect the hierarchy in certain ways. So you could assign a permission to someone for the entire institution but then restrict um, you know, access to the to view the board members data or something like that. The member change subject uh, web service operation is something that isn't really used a lot and isn't used over web services that much I think. Um, but basically if you have a subject ID that can change, for instance if you use a net ID and then someone gets married and changes their name and changes their net ID, then the member object in grouper um, will need to be associated with a different subject. So a member object in grouper um, is just a wrapper around a uh, source ID and subject ID. Um, another thing that can happen is you could have duplicates where the same person has two subject IDs for some reason and you need to clean it up so that um, they only have one. So basically you're going to pass in um, the old subject and the new subject and Grouper will see if that um, new subject already exists and if so it'll merge them, if not it'll create a new one or change the, uh, the reference to the old one. And if there were two, you could have Grouper delete the unused member record if uh, it's applicable. Attribute name save uh, web service operation will create or edit uh, attribute def names, which uh, permission names are also attribute definition names. So if your application is dynamic and it's using attributes or permissions, then when someone creates a resource in your application, you're going to have to create a permission resource or an attribute definition name so that it can be used or uh, secured or whatever. So for this operation, you're going to pass in um, the attribute definition lookup, the name or UUID of the attribute definition, the parent folder where it lives, the display name, system name, description, etc. And you can batch um, those operations up and use a transaction if you want or just send one at a time. Attribute name delete web service operation will delete an attribute definition name and a permission name is the same as an attribute definition name, it's a special type of it. So basically you just pass in the attribute definition name lookup, which is either the attribute definition name or UUID, and it'll delete it. And you can batch those up um, to send multiple at the same time and send a transaction type if you want that batch to um, be operated inside of a transaction or not. Find attribute definition name is a way to search for attribute definition names and permission names or attribute definition names. So you can pass in a scope, which is um, sort of like a freeform text with uh, wildcards. And split scope is an interesting parameter. You pass in true or false, and it'll take that scope and it'll split it on white space. So if the user types in three words with white space, it'll do sort of like what Google does, where it'll look for re um, results that have the first uh, substring and the second substring and the third substring. Um, but they don't have to be um, sequential, uh, separated with space in the um, attribute name. So you can pass in the attribute definition lookup if you only want attribute names inside of a certain attribute definition. You can pass in the assign type, which is uh, if it's assigned to a group or a folder or whatever. You can pass in the um, attribute definition type which is um, if it's a limit or a permission 
or just an attribute or whatever. You can pass in the attribute definition name lookups if you know the names or IDs that you want to return. And you can page or sort the results of these. Finally, you can um, pass in an attribute definition name lookup and you can uh, pass in a permission inheritance type and it will return the attribute definition names that um, are uh, using um, the directed graph uh, sort of like inheritance um, or sort of like a hierarchy. You can return the uh, permissions that are implied by the permission either immediately or immediate and effectively or you could um, return the permissions that imply this permission either immediately or immediately or effectively. The attribute def name inheritance operation lets you set up the inheritance between attribute definition names um, and you can assign or un unassign that inheritance. So this is helpful again for dynamic applications where you're creating attribute definition names or permission names on the fly and those um, have inheritance with other permission names. Um, so for instance if you had an application that's doing a folder structure and you want to have permissions that are stored in grouper then as some creates a folder you could um, create that folder as a permission name and you can inherit uh, permissions from um, the parent folders or, or whatever you want to do. Um, so basically if someone gets a permission on a parent folder they get it for all the subfolders too. And maybe that's the behavior you want, maybe it isn't. So you pass in the owner attribute definition name and then the related one and then you pass in if you're assigning it or unassigning it and if you should replace the existing list or not. And you can pass in multiple of these too, so there's a transaction type uh, so that you can um, uh, do everything in a transaction. Click on the in the video description to reinforce your knowledge of this topic. Thank you very much. For more information, look at the wiki or mailing list or demo server or training website.